Hello, welcome to this continuation of lesson four from our drainage vent lesson series. This is part two, I'm Plumber Tom, and in this video we're gonna go over some specific examples for circuit vents. In the first part of lesson four, we looked at the principles for circuit vents and relief vents. Hopefully that gave you a good idea of how circuit vents work. So let's jump in and look at some applications of that based on some plans and how that might be piped. Before looking at specific examples, let's quickly review the circuit vent principles that we find in both the Uniform Plumbing Code and the International Plumbing Code. First of all, circuit vent principle one, no more than eight fixtures can be connected to a horizontal branch on a circuit vent. So eight fixtures is the max. Circuit vent principle two, each fixture drain shall connect horizontally to the horizontal branch being circuit vented. So you've got your main branch going through there and all of the fixture drains branching off, those have to connect horizontally. Circuit vent principle three, the horizontal drain pipe is considered both a drain and a vent from the most upstream fixture where the vent is connected to the most downstream fixture in the circuit. Circuit vent principle four, circuit vent connection to dry vent must be between the two most upstream fixture drains. Circuit vent principle five, the circuit vent pipe must be a dry vent only and is not allowed to receive any discharge from any fixtures. Circuit vent principle six, circuit vents are allowed to be connected together so you can have several circuits in a row and the vents of those can connect together. Every eight fixtures would be considered a circuit. It would need a circuit vent and then it would start a new circuit with the following fixtures. Circuit vent principle seven, fixtures other than circuit vented fixtures are allowed to connect into the circuit provided that they are either individually or common vented. So you can have other drains coming through that circuit as long as they are vented. Let's move on to some examples. All right, here's a really basic circuit with eight fixtures. We see the vent between the two upstream fixtures. These are all floor mount water closets, so flanged connections. Up at the very top here, this is just a clean out, end of line clean out. Please don't misunderstand that to be like, receiving waste from fixtures above. It's just there to clean out. Okay, but this is the basics, right? You have eight fixtures in a row. And again, your vent is between the two most upstream fixtures. And there's your circuit vent. Now, it's important to understand that a back-to-back -back connection or a double Y is considered as one connection point. So as we look at this next example, we see a similar eight fixtures. These are all floor mount, flanged, water closet connections. But in this case, we have double Ys connecting on either side and branching into restrooms that are going to be back to back. How does the venting look? Well, we still have a circuit vent between the two most upstream fixtures, and that vent is going to allow air downstream through the drain, through that center horizontal branch, and that's going to vent all of those fixtures. This is another basic circuit. Here we have another similar setup where we have back-to-back -back water closets. Also notice that on this one, we have floor drains that are going to be connected in this circuit. All of these will connect to a horizontal branch that goes between the fixtures underneath the wall. Where would the vent go? Well, the vent needs to connect between the two most upstream fixture connections. So that would be between the water closets, and the floor drain. Now please remember that the Uniform Plumbing Code says that floor drains can only be connected if they're on that same horizontal plane. If we were using back-to-back wall-hung carrier toilets here, those floor drains would not be allowed to connect in because they'd be below it. But because all of this horizontal branch is down at the same horizontal plane below the floor, branching off to catch fixtures, we can catch those floor drains. And again, that vent is going to be between those two most upstream fixtures. The circuit vent is providing air for those fixtures from the vent going all the way down to the last fixtures, the double Y where we're connecting those water closets. And again, I will emphasize that that circuit vent is a dry vent only. That's one of those important principles. Now, so far with fixture vents, we have mostly been looking at commercial applications. What about residential? It is very possible to use a circuit vent in residential setting. Here we have back-to-back -back water closets and tubs. 
In this case, we can do a circuit bent. We're gonna have the drain come down the middle and we'll use double Ys to branch off and catch the tubs and catch the toilets. Where does the circuit vent go? It goes between the two most upstream fixtures. So between the toilet and the tub, as long as we have a dry vent coming off, this is going to work as a circuit vent. Now, a circuit vent does not have to have eight fixtures connected. You can have four, you can have less. But this gives us the option of being able to catch fixtures and properly drain them using a circuit vent as long as they're connecting to that same horizontal branch. This could extend on and catch other fixtures that would be connected. So to review here, we have the upstream cleanout, double back-to-back -back water closet connections, circuit vent in between, and two tub connections downstream from that. All of that is the circuit. Let's look at another residential application here. Here we have two bathroom groups, back-to-back, -back, a lavatory, toilet, and a tub. These groups also have a floor drain, or that could even be a shower worked into the systems. Let's look at how we're going to vent this. We've talked before in, in these principles about the fact that a circuit vent can have other vented fixtures coming through it. As we look at this diagram, the circuit starts at the water closets. The circuit vent is between the water closets and the floor drain branch. And then the tub is downstream from that. The circuit then would be from the toilets down to the tub. Now, coming into that upstream, we do have the lavatory drains. Those are back-to-back -back lavatory drains, common vented. There's a vent that runs off the top of those, and those are connected into that circuit. This is where the circuit vent is unique from the wet vent. A horizontal wet vent is restricted to those bathroom group fixtures and restricted to a total of 12 drainage fixture units. This would exceed that. This is more than that. But we're able to accomplish this by separating off the labs and saying these are common vented. And then we have a circuit downstream from that, from the water closets down to the tub connections. This is the circuit and they can be connected together. So basically what we're saying here is, if you have too many fixtures on a horizontal wet vent system, throw in a circuit, throw in another dry vent wherever you can, if that's possible in a wall, and then you're going to be able to vent everything properly. We also need to make sure that we're setting these up correctly, following the principles and the sizing so that we don't end up with problems with drains that won't drain because there's not enough airflow. Hopefully these examples of circuit vents help you to see some ways that circuit venting can be applied. Use your creativity. As long as you stick to the principles, you can use this to your advantage. Make sure to stay tuned for additional drainage, waste, and vent lesson videos coming up. Do me a favor, like, subscribe, share these videos. Also check out in the description below other learning resources, books that you can use to help study, study courses. When you purchase resources, that helps me to create more great content. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.